I have a tendency to assume that I can handle more than I actually can and that is how I ended up in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania's biggest city, all by myself, absolutely terrified. And I know that maybe like I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm freaking out too much and I'm sorry for especially for anyone local watching this but it's just all very new to me. Good morning guys. I am coming to you live from Tanzania. Dar es Salaam to be more exact not the capital but the biggest city here in the country and I'm actually terrified I'm completely I'm I'm I'm, I'm scared <laughs> and I know what you might say then well maybe you shouldn't have come to Africa by yourself well maybe I shouldn't have but now I'm here so I have to deal with it so this was a rather rocky beginning to my five weeks long trip across Tanzania. I made a, maybe a slightly oh irrational God. decision as I later discovered to travel Africa all by myself, just my backpack and I. And after arriving in Dar es Salaam, I very quickly realized why so many tourists coming to Tanzania choose to avoid it. Dar es Salaam is an interesting city, but it's also a challenging place to explore by yourself. So as you know, I am currently taking a couple of months to travel full time. I just came from Amman. I will be starting this video with exploring my area, which is actually one of the best, if not the best neighborhood in Dar es Salaam. And right now I am at a shopping area. It's called the Slipway. The shopping mall is right behind me. There are a lot of bars here, restaurants. It's a very nice place to hang out. On my first day in Dar es Salaam, I decided to take it easy and explore my area. The neighborhood where I was staying is called Masaki and it's known to be a very affluent area of Dar. It's very green. There are a lot of nice restaurants here and cafes. Uh, a lot of embassies are located here and in general it is a relatively easy or easier area of Dar es Salaam to explore for first-time visitors like myself. My goal for today is to show you my very first impression of both Tanzania and uh, Dar es Salaam. How do I feel about being a solo female traveler here? Um, as I said, I've never even been to Africa, so everything here is so new to me. And if you are a bit too put off by my intro, me admitting that I'm terrified, what can I say to you? I decided that I will be real with you guys and just just be honest and tell you that I am scared because I am scared. I'm not gonna hide it. You know, whenever I watch travel vlogs and people are so brave and they just go everywhere by themselves and go to all these like places and they're just never afraid of anything. I cannot relate because I'm not that type of person. I've always wanted to come to Africa. This is like a big, big dream of mine. Tanzania has been on top of my bucket list for years. So don't get me wrong. I'm super, super excited to be here. I'm very happy to explore the country, but I'm also not gonna lie to you. It is intimidating to visit a country for the first time, uh, to navigate by yourself and also to film. Keep in mind that I'm walking around with a camera pointed at my face. And this is a very important point that I want to emphasize here. If you come to Dar es Salaam as a tourist and you just wish to explore the city without a camera, not creating content like I do, it will be 100 times easier for you. The reason why I was so insecure in the beginning was the fact that I was warned by several people to be very careful with my camera. I was told multiple times not to take my phone out on the street which is really impossible in my case because then this vlog would never be made. Okay. So I walked for a little bit, but it started to rain. So now I'm hiding here, sitting on a random chair that I found. Dar es Salaam is home to 8 million people. The city is massive, it's loud, it's hectic. But as I was told by locals, it's not necessarily super dangerous. Yes, it's a big city, so it has a dark size as every other big city out there. But the biggest threat here is really pickpocketing slash robbery. Um, and you can very easily avoid it by not showing your belongings on the street. Uh, 
which I was doing. I was showing my camera all the time because I was vlogging. So that's what mainly made me so nervous. Life is crazy sometimes. Only a couple of months back, I was spending all day long stuck in an office thinking about when I'll be able to travel. And now I'm here in Africa. I mean, it's, it, it's crazy. Can you see these monsters? Two of them here. Oh my god, where, what is happening? And one uh, climbing. I've been in Tanzania for less than 24 hours and I've already seen so many of them, like everywhere. They're on the sidewalk, inside in the hostel, crawling on the bathroom floor. So I made it to Cocoa Beach. Uh, unfortunately, still overcast and it just rained, but still a very nice beach as you can tell. And this lovely man behind has been uh, following me for a while, welcoming me to Tanzania. One thing that made me feel quite uneasy in the beginning was the amount of people constantly approaching me on the street, you know, just strangers talking to me. So there are two things that people constantly say to me here. One is mambo, which I found out means hello, or like, what's up? And the other one is karibu, which means welcome. And I cannot tell you how many people have already welcomed me to this country today. At least 30 for sure. And I'm not, not exaggerating. <laughs> Later, when I started traveling around Tanzania, I realized that this is quite common here. A lot of people will say hello to you on the street. Some of them are just being friendly. Some are curious of foreigners. They don't mean anything bad. Thank you. How do you say thank you? Asante. So I told him that I don't want a coconut, but he decided to bring one anyways. <laughs> Coconut though. Yeah. He Shame, yeah. He decided for me. I need a coconut. Good morning. It is my second day here in Dar es Salaam, and today we're gonna go and explore the downtown area. I'm waiting for a friend right now, so there is gonna be two of us. Uh, we decided to try to do it on our own without a group or a guide. Uh, and we'll just see if we can figure it out. Getting around Dar es Salaam shouldn't be too problematic because they have two options here. They have taxis, obviously, and they also have tuk-tuks, which are called something else here. They're not called tuk-tuk. So this is our transportation. How, how did you say you call it? Beja? Bajaji. We ordered the Bajaji on full. I like how we just like almost drove into you. Yeah. <laughs> just like move out of my way. Uh, I haven't been in a tuk-tuk since... Uh, I don't know, long time, since Thailand probably. So the best thing about staying at hostels is definitely the fact that it's so easy to meet new people and I was very happy to have Sheena by my side because exploring downtown Dar es Salaam would be much more difficult if I would be doing it alone. Um, and by the way, I stayed at the Slow Leopard, which I would definitely very, very highly recommend. Great hostel, very friendly staff and overall good atmosphere. So we made it to the center of Dar es Salaam and the first stop is gonna be Botanical Garden. My first impression of this city is that it's so much more green than I expected. There's just trees everywhere and it's also a very nice like lush green color. But to be honest, like it rained already like five times since I got here 48 hours ago, which maybe is not like the norm. I've been told that apparently it hasn't rained for a month. So people were very happy to see the rain. Cool thing about Dar is that it's located right by the Indian Ocean. And as you can see, the color is so nice. So Dar es Salaam can be roughly translated to home of peace um, and this beautiful name was given to Dar by a sultan from Zanzibar who was looking for a good place for his new palace and decided that this was the right spot. Back then Dar es Salaam was just a small fishing village and in only about 150 years the city grew to what it is today, the biggest city of Tanzania country center of commerce, finance, education. So we made it to like the main downtown area uh, and it is very, very crowded and very hectic here. I haven't seen many foreigners, tourists so far. To be honest, I haven't seen any. So 
we've been walking for not very long, probably like half an hour or something. And we've been already told at least three times, if not more, that we're not allowed to take pictures. Even if we're not taking pictures, we're like literally holding a phone. Um, so I'm not sure what it is. I think maybe there are like a lot of government buildings here and it's not allowed to film or take pictures. <laughs> We are trying to find the St. Joseph Cathedral, which is one of the top tourist attractions here in the center of Dar. Uh, we just found it. I think we just, yeah, we just found it. <laughs> oh yeah, right here. It's one of the leftovers from the Germans. It is interesting because there is really like no tourists. Yeah, right? So the plan now is to find a local market uh, but we've been told that it can get very very hectic and it can be tricky especially with the camera so I think we're just gonna see So we reached the market uh, but we decided to take a break in this nice little ice cream shop not that it's ice cream, so I'm just drinking water, but we definitely need a break. So Kuriaku Market is one of the biggest and one of like the main local markets here in the center of Dar es Salaam. It's basically a place where you can get everything. And I know I'm repeating myself at this point, but it is the most hectic place I've ever been to, probably. <laughs> And I know that maybe like I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm freaking out too much and I'm sorry for especially for anyone local watching this but it's just all very new to me. Koryaku market is huge, it occupies several blocks and we ended up just walking around and taking it all in and there was definitely a lot to take in. It was very busy, very lively and very colorful. Overall, yes, a hectic place, but also absolutely fascinating to me. It was so interesting to see and looking back at my footage, I'm so glad that we did decide to explore this part of Dar because it was definitely an unforgettable experience. Is this avocado? <gasps> How can it be so big? Oh my god, and what is this? Oh, this is ananas. Ananas. Ananas and this? I don't know what that is, but... Lemon. Oh, lemon. This is lemon. Can I try this? What does it taste like? No idea what that is. Sweet. So we are done with the market and the last stop of the day is gonna be Tinga Tinga Art Market. I don't think I've ever been to a market before where there are so many artists in here, uh, you know, just sitting and working on their art. So it's really cool that you don't only look at finished product, but also you can sort of watch the whole process. How long does it take you to uh, finish this painting? For one week. One week. So I'm gonna try their samosa. Uh, apparently samosas are a very popular street food snack here. So Dar is very much, has always been very much influenced by India. And a lot of different, it's a kind of, can't talk anymore, I'm very tired. Basically there is a huge Indian influence here. So that's why the cuisine, um, I'm just gonna eat my samosa, okay? That's, it's funny because it's like a, 
Mm. It's like a whole potato and some onion. And it's quite spicy. It's actually very nice. So an interesting fact about Tanzania that I forgot to share with you is the fact that the name Tanzania is actually relatively brand new. Uh, it was made up in the 60s when the Brits left Tanzania and Tanzania gained its independence. So the land here was called Tanganyiki. <laughs> Did I say it right? I think I got it wrong. Tanganyike? Sorry for butchering the name. And basically what they did is that they took part of it, so Tan, and then Zan from Zanzibar, and they made it into a new name of this country, which is Tanzania. So I'm back home. This was a very good, but also a very, very intense day. But I must say that I am very happy that I came here because this was definitely a very different experience to anything I've experienced before. Um, very chaotic and intense city but also definitely an interesting one and I, I know I'm kind of being dramatic and constantly telling you that I'm afraid or you know that I'm overwhelmed but please keep in mind that I'm just very new to this place and I'm sure that the more time I will spend here the less dramatic I will be um, that's just me, I guess that's just my personality. I'm not the bravest person out there. I know that there are people who just don't care about certain things as much as I do or are not as afraid. But I just prefer to share my actual real feelings and thoughts with you guys instead of just trying to be more correct for the sake of internet. So the plan for the next couple of weeks is traveling all across Tanzania. I have five weeks here so I will definitely see uh, quite a bit of this country. I'm not sure where I'm going yet but I'm definitely going to be doing Zanzibar safari. Um, I think after Dar es Salaam I will go to Kilwa which is down south from here a couple of hundred kilometers down south. It's a very like untouched not as touristy part of the country so i'm super excited uh so hopefully you want to stick around and i hopefully see you soon bye